What's going on guys, it's Bunny Muffins. I got a new TFT video today. We got five comps that the Korean players, high elo, are spamming in their games. I'm going to be doing this every patch as usual, and um, I'm going to let you know what they're playing, so let's just get right into it. Um, keep in mind though that there are a lot of different compositions that people are going, and this patch is more about adapting than forcing comps, contrary to set one. Um, so just look out for that, try to keep everything open in mind. Um, sometimes you just want to complete that high level 4 or 5 cost if the game gives it to you for free instead of trying to go for a specific composition. Um, this patch is all about adapting, but I'm going to give you some examples of some compositions that are being played at high elo, um, just to give you an idea of what things you could try to go for, but not necessarily force. So the first one we have is the hyper roll light comp. This composition is really popular all over the world, not just Korea, and it revolves around having six of the lights, making a light, and then eventually going for Lux at, to get up to nine. Um, so the advantage of this comp is that it's pretty strong in the early to mid game because you do hyper roll for Nasus in vain. Runan's Hurricane's critical on her along with some sort of on hit ability um, or on hit item. Giant Slayer is pretty good. You could use Red Buff. Um, you could give her Rage Blade as well. Just pretty much anything with the on hit effect that enhances her auto attacks is going to be fine. Um, next, you, you might want like an Iceborne Gauntlet and maybe a Redemption for one of your frontliners. Um, Guardian Angel is still pretty decent on Aatrox even though it got nerfed a lot. Um, and then you want to put Seraphs on Kindred and make her a light. You could also put in Master Yi and make him a light as well. It depends on who you get. Master Yi is a little more difficult to get since you use a lot of your economy to hyper roll. Um, but this is something to go for. You don't necessarily need to hit Lux, but um, you definitely want to get to at least level 7 so you could run Kindred or Master Yi as an extra light and also try to get the Talisman of Light item. Um, next composition we have revolves around Blade Masters and Assassins. So the key item for this composition is the Blade of the Rune King to get to four Blade Masters. Yasuo is very good if you are on a wind map and give him Iceborne Gauntlet because he gets a lot of dodge and it just Iceborne Gauntlet just fills up the map with a slow zone. Um, the other late game bombs you have are Master Yi and Janna. These two give Mystic as well, and Janna also gives Wind Synergy to Yasuo, which is really great. But the real carries are Kha'Zix, Kiana, and Nocturne, which are your three assassins. Um, you really want to stack items on Nocturne and Kha'Zix, and pretty much you want Infinity Edge, Blade of the Rune King, Bloodthirster, um, as many Infinity Edges as you can, because that's uh, the best item for assassins, because they take advantage of critical strikes so well. Um, and then for Sivir, you could put like a red buff on her as well since she has a ricochet, which hits a lot of different units. So stuff, something like a red buff could be very useful as like a supportish item in this composition. Um, but you definitely want Yasuo and Rek'Sai in the front line. If Yasuo does have Iceborne, you want to isolate him so that everyone attacks him. If not, you could put Rek'Sai next to him. Um, but these are your two tanks in this composition. Also, you get Steel from Rek'Sai and Nocturne and... Desert from Sivir and Azix. The Kiana buff doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to synergize, but I guess if you were to pick an ideal one, it would be Wind, because that's the only one that could really work in this composition. But Kiana doesn't really matter what her type is or what her element is. She's just very good in this composition because of her um, ability, which is probably one of the few forms of CC that you do have in this composition. Moving on to the next composition, we have... Uh, ocean, Infernal, and um, kind of a mixed bag, but it mainly revolves around summoners. You want to get Zyra to level 3, she's very important, and you could put items such as like Spear of Shoujin on her, um, but I wouldn't stack her too heavily. The main carry again is going to be Kindred, which you could put Seraph's Embrace, Rage Blade, pretty much most items work on Kindred, but Seraph's is the most important one. Um, and this composition is very strong because you get a lot of different summoners. Zyra Annie is a great combo, and then you just add in extra Infernos to complement it as well, and you have the Ranger synergy from Varus and Kindred. They're just like a ton of synergies that you get from this comp, which is why it's so strong. And then for your front line, you have the double ocean to give everyone a lot of mana. And since all five of your damage dealers, Zyra, Annie, Varus, Malzahar, and Kindred, all rely on getting a lot of mana, having an ocean synergy is a no-brainer, and the two best oceans for that are Nautilus and Thresh because they're both frontliners and they're both get the Warden buff as well. So you do, do want some type of tankiness on these frontliners though since you only have two of them. Iceborne's very good. 
Redemption's very good. Locket could be used as well, um, or any other dodge item. But this composition's pretty strong, um, and you want to get Zyra to level 3, and um, maybe even Varus or Kindred, but that's a little more difficult. Moving into our fourth composition, we have one revolving around hyper-rolling predators. This one's pretty easy to get at least top 4 in, because any hyper-roll comp's going to be very strong in the early to mid-game. Um, but this one actually runs four predators, even though you only need three for the synergy. Um, and that's just because the more you have, the more champions you have that can proc the effect of predator, which is pretty useful in my opinion. Um, and then after that, you just complement it with some tank lines and some poison as well. Be because this composition revolves around like a level three Kog'Maw, adding in extra synergies to him only helps, especially since you're already going to build Runons on him, um, because Runons works really well with the predator proc. Um, so you do have the three poison from Singe, Kogma, and Mundo. Um, and Mundo's kind of just there as your main tank. You'll want to throw Guardian Angel and um, Dragon Claw on him, or any other defensive items um, work really well in Mundo. You pretty much just need at least one dedicated tank in this comp, um, but this is really strong for getting top four just because most hyper roll compositions are built around that. Though I will say the light composition that I showed you earlier, which also hyper rolls, has a bit of a stronger late game than this composition. And then the last comp I wanted to show you guys today is the Ocean comp. Um, Ocean got huge buffs this patch, and because Thresh and Nautilus have innate synergies through um, through the Warden class, it's like a no-brainer to put them in any composition where all the carries need a lot of mana. Um, and this one is no different. You have three summoners as your carries and three infernals. Um, Zyra, Annie, Yorick, and Brand. Brand being the strongest here, but um, you don't really need the mage synergy because it's a little more difficult to get since I don't think Syndra is as strong as the Zyra-Annie combo, but you could put in Syndra and take out some of the other folks in order to run mages as well. Um, that's a very viable alternative as well. Um, and then in the late game, you'll want, obviously, the Lux for the Ocean Synergy. Lux is an avatar, so that means she gives two bonuses for whatever element she is. In this case, you definitely want Ocean because it gives your entire team so much more mana. Um, and then you just end up getting a ton of Zyra plants, a ton of Annie Bears, and a ton of Brandles. And as long as you have one or two tank items in the front line, um, it literally just blows up entire teams. Um, so what we can learn from all these five comps that I've showed you today, um, there is a similar pattern. You want at least one or two tank items. You don't want to stack all damage or all tanks. So you definitely balance a lot more in terms of items compared to last patch. Last patch, you kind of, you could kind of do all offensive or all defensive items, and that would kind of work. But in this patch, you kind of want to mix and match them. So it makes a lot more intuitive sense compared to the last meta. If you want to get top 4, obviously try to go for the hyper roll comps. If you want to go a little more late game, you want to add in some composition that revolves around Lux or Singe because they have a lot of late game potential. But that's what I've been seeing this week so far. I know it's only been a couple of days and the meta is going to change a lot coming into the future because everyone's still trying to figure out how to play this patch. But I'm hoping just to give you guys an idea of what compositions to go for, what could work, what doesn't, and... Um, try to go from there. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of these compositions in the comment section down below. Um, what have you guys been trying that could work also, or has been working for you? Personally, I think this patch is more about adapting to whatever you get, rather than forcing a certain comp. So I haven't really been purposely going for any of these. I've just been taking what the game gives me and putting out as strong as units as I can, um, depending on what their rarity and strength level is. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to share it with your friends and like and subscribe as usual. I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and follow me on my socials below.